also a bit excited and nervous to be here. I'm pretty sure you've seen this quote before. For some reason, they use it very often on restaurant menus, mainly next to the pasta section or dessert section. And how about this one? Have you seen it? I never resist temptation because I have found that things that are bad for me do not tempt me. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about the importance of food and the importance of food choices that we make every day. Mm, because I strongly believe that if there is one thing that can enhance the quality of our life is the food that we eat. Four times a day, 365 days a week, on average 70 years, this is the amount of food choices that we make in a lifetime. I think it's a staggering amount and we should not leave it to chance what we eat and we should not always follow our temptations. I'm here because I would like to convince you that it's worth um, to listen to your body when you make a decision about what to eat and I would like you to go on a fast. You may be surprised that I am trying to convince you to go on a fast, but I will explain it in a moment. I think we have a perfect timing to go on a fast. It's spring, it's late March, so I think you're very likely to have made a New Year's resolution and that you have already failed. So give yourself another chance. Uh, spring is the uh, similarly as autumn, is a very good time of the year to cleanse your body. And the third reason is that we're in the period of Lent, Wielki Post, and most religions would advise you to go on a fast from time to time. I think it's a very wise thing to do. And I, I'm convinced that if you cleanse your body after after that, after the fast, you really can communicate with your body and you know what, what's best for you, what's best for your body so that you feel well. Someone who founded a restaurant guide, Gastronauti, uh, is making publicity for, for fasting. He's trying to convince you to go on a fast. Well, um, probably because I've eaten so much in my life, maybe more than you, uh, that I know where it can take you. And uh, I can tell you beforehand, don't follow your temptations too often. Exactly one year ago, I attended TEDx carrying a food jar and uh, in the food jar I carried cooked millet because it was the time when I was doing a seven day fast when I was living only on millet for seven days. Uh, I had to do this because I felt I had to make a dramatic, a, a radical change in my lifestyle. I've liked and enjoyed food since I was a kid, since I was, since I was a toddler. I got interested in cooking when I was eight or nine. Uh, the first dish I made was pancakes. You usually say that the first pancake sucks. In my case, the whole batch sucked because I made it with potato flour. And I got serious about collecting cookbooks when I was a teenager. I have nearly a thousand of them now. Mm, I studied management. I went into, to work into the corporate world after uh, university. But I always felt that food was like the most exciting and most pleasant thing there was. So seven years ago, I quit my job and I became a food writer. I started writing articles on food and cookbooks. Mm, and basically, I had the perfect excuse to eat all the time uh, and to travel the world, to taste um, most uh, original ethnic foods and to eat in some of the best restaurants in the world. And everyone would say, oh, you have the dream job. Um, and I've, I, I thought so, too. But at the same time, I obviously got fat to the to the point that it was only my grandmother Hildegarda who had the nerve to tell me you know you should lose weight and I started having some minor health issues 
Another wake-up call came when a good friend of mine, Anya, she, she felt sick, she got cancer. And she made me aware of how important food was for our well-being and for our health. She lost her battle, unfortunately, last year in September. Mm. So one year ago, I went on this millet, seven-day millet fast, and then it fo I followed it with um, a several months strict vegan diet. And I can tell you that this was the best thing that has ever happened to me. I started feeling better. I felt I had more energy. Uh, I lost weight. I've, uh, I was healthier. I am healthier now. But what's most important, I started, I had better relationships with people. This, is, this was unexpected. And um, I think we often forget to what extent our mind and our body are connected. We feel it's different. We, we, hope it's, uh, we hope it's separate. But we are one. Our body affects our mind and our mind affects our body. We should not be preoccupied solely with food itself. We should, our life should not revolve around the pleasure of eating. And I've been talking about myself at length, but actually it's not about me, it's about you. These are the names of people whom, uh, with whom I've interacted over the last year, my acquaintances, my friends, who I know for sure were inspired by uh, what by my experience, but what I went through and what I achieved changing my diet. They went to see either the same dietitian or they changed the way they eat, and they were happy with it. I can, I can see, I'm very happy to see, how they become more energetic and they enjoy life much more than they used to. So I would like you to accept the challenge of going on a fast just for 30 days, Go on a cleansing diet. If you prefer the name diet, it's okay. I like the word fast. Don't eat meat, don't eat fish, dairy, coffee, tea, sweets, alcohol, cigarettes. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't eat refined foods, flour and fats. I know it may sound scary, but it's just 30 days and it won't kill you. <laughs> and I, if I could do this, so can you. I'm not the most strong-willed person, so, uh, and I had to change my work accordingly, and I did it, and I'm very happy. Chances are that after the, these 30 days, you will not want to go back to the way you ate before. In case you're wondering, what will you eat if you cannot eat meat, fish, and so on? And there are lots of grains that probably you overlook today, like barley, buckwheat, millet, brown rice, red rice, black rice, um, Kamuts, pelt, amaranth, um, that quinoa, red quinoa, white quinoa. These are only grains. There are pulses, all kinds of kidneys, chickpeas, and so on. Vegetables, fruits. There is a whole range of foods that you, you don't consider uh, an option today, but you should. So you will need support because this is not an easy process i'm not going to tell you though it's easy you can do it you can do it but it's difficult but it's worthwhile first you need to be enthusiastic about it don't even try to tell yourself okay i'll start tomorrow no 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 tomorrow tomorrow never works set a date in the future maybe in a week or two weeks and look forward to it associate with people who are likely with uh, to improve you I have this friend, she's good, she's, she's fun, she's sincere. Uh, I really like spending time with her, but at the same time, we always ended up having one or two desserts when we went out. So for some time, we just spoke on the phone, but now we, we socialize again. Uh, but at the same time, I made new friends, friends who, with whom I can share um, about the difficulties I have in, about integrating this diet in this, this new lifestyle. And um, it's important that you are surrounded by people who, by people who will 
support you because for some reason a lot of people will be threatened by the changes you're making and for, for by the choices you make at the dinner in a restaurant they will be asking are you getting enough protein yes i am are you going to be on this diet for a long time well as long as it's needed if you're like me it will be easier for you to abstain totally from foods that are not good for you than to uh, consume them in uh, moderate amounts Set up a few routines that will be nice and pleasant for you. This is a picture of, a, of my favorite breakfast. It's whole grain oats cooked with apples. So <clears throat> create your own rituals. Set time aside to do proper shopping, reasonable shopping. Find farmers, small shops. Don't shop in the supermarket because it's convenient. Find good providers. May set time aside to cook uh, meals that you will take to the office. Do you know that Japanese men, they tend to joke that Japanese women, they go to office just for the pleasure to make the bento, the, um, the office lunches. Get yourself some toys, new toys, like food jars and bento boxes. Girls, you can get yourself a new bag, a lunch bag, in which you will carry uh, your food to the office. If you need inspiration, go to the website of Mimi Kirk. She's, she was born in 1938, so she's, this picture was taken when she was 73, and she was voted sexiest vegetarian over 50 by PETA. Guys, if you're worried that you will be weak uh, if you ex adopt this diet, then don't. There is a whole community of vegan bodybuilders. Read. First of all, read this book, In Defense of Food, by Michael Pollan. And if you want more information, you can read China Study. Go through cookbooks, vegetarian cookbooks, mainstream chefs like Nobu, like Alain Passard, or this guy who made a name for himself teaching Brits how to make their own sausages. Now he's, he's coming out with a book on, veg on vegetables. Aldo Zilli, his book was... Um, supported, was endorsed by Paul McCartney. Alain Ducasse, a Michelin star chef, also just recently published a book, Not Nature, Mostly Vegetarian. Otto Lenghi, visit blogs that will inspire you. And if you fail from, some to from time to time, don't worry, just go and check out this book, Mindless Eating, it will help you to trick yourself into eating uh, the right foods. Well, start as soon as possible, because I'm sure that a year from now uh, you will wish that you had started today. And if you fail after a week, remember that the first pancake always sucks, but just fry another one. Thank you.